Alright guys, so the chapter 2 map is back and I'm really excited because this was one of my favorite seasons of all time and in today's video I want to go over seven really good solo drop spots for you guys might not remember from chapter 2 This video is going to be kind of a, sort of a flashback of you know, drop spots that we've had before because obviously we've had this map before But I really think it's going to be valuable because guys there are so many tournaments coming up There's going to be cash cups. There's going to be ranked cups Pretty much anything you guys want to play is going to be there So you need to have some good solo drop spot if you want to compete. Let's get right into this video So guys right here the first POI is going to be pristine point this drop spot, like I said, obviously was in the map before, and I really missed this drop spot because I actually used to land here for trios back in the day, and as you guys know, trios is the competitive game mode, so this can be used for that as well. However, for the solo game, it's really solid. There's going to be three houses, as you can see, one's right here, another right there, and then one a little bit further back down there, and there's plenty of wood that you guys can farm in the area. There's going to be plenty of loot you guys can get from the various chests and stuff in the area. Obviously, I'd recommend you guys try to find one house to land at and then consistently land it there and then plan a little loot route. Sort of maybe go in a zigzag pattern, start at this house, then rotate down to the beach or something. You know, there's plenty of different options for you guys here. Something else that's really huge as well is that if you are contested, it's actually really easy to get to this POI and then sneak away pretty easily. For example, if you guys land at this house and you want to sneak away to Steamy Stacks, it's pretty easy. You just kind of you can grapple, you can slide now because there is a sliding feature in this chapter. There's plenty of different things for you guys to do if you guys want to land here and get away. And then obviously, like I said before, there is a beach down here that has some loot as well. As you guys can see, there's a port of fort. There's going to be a shotgun right here. And then you guys can also rotate over to this area. And this area, you guys can fish. You can do pretty much whatever else uh, in this area that you want to do. And that's what's going to kind of help you guys have that ability to get a really good amount of loot really quickly. So that's why Pristine Point, in my opinion, probably one of the best drop spots for you guys this season. If you guys are looking to land somewhere low key, somewhere that may be a bit far from the center of the map, but somewhere that you guys can survive at. Now guys, this next drop spot is an absolute classic. Once again, this is going to be Fort Crumpet. This is a really solid drop spot because as you guys can see, the literal whole thing is made out of brick, so getting brick is no problem. And also, there's going to be plenty of trees and stuff around the area for you guys to get really quick wood as well. I also really enjoy this drop spot because, like I said, it's big, so you guys are able to split this with other solo players if you want to do so as well. In terms of playing this drop spot, yes, it is on the very side of the map. It's kind of on the edge. So what I'd recommend you guys try to do is land here, rotate as quick as possible over to Sweaty Sands, and then either try to get a car or some other method of mobility and then start rotating. Obviously, you guys, as you can see, I'm getting a pretty good amount of loot. There's going to be a bunch of chests here. I think around 11 or 12. There's a great amount. And then obviously, if you guys want to rotate somewhere, if the zone pulls towards you, for example, you want to rotate somewhere for even more loot, you can rotate down either towards that house over there. The crates right there are really good as well for metal if you guys want that. And then also, this place has a boat. You guys can easily rotate around the area there. It's really effective in my opinion. Overall, Fort Crumpet is an absolute classic POI. I really miss it from back in the day. I'm really happy it's back. And I think that a lot of you guys can benefit from landing at Fort Crumpet as your main solo POI. Alright guys, and another absolute classic spot is going to be the weather station. This is actually what was known as Cypher PK's draw spot. I believe he actually got a little book placed here, and I actually wonder if it's still there. We can check on that in a second. But this is great because it's such a tiny POI, and it has such a vast amount of loot, tons of metal, tons of brick, and tons of wood in such a small amount of area. So I think that's a great solo POI to land at. Obviously, this place will be a little bit contested because it is a little bit more central than the other POIs I just went over. However, you need to understand, this is such a powerful POI for you guys to land at if you can get Get it uncontested. Let's actually see if Cypher PK's book is still here. Oh, I guess not. I believe it was here back when he did get it added in the later stages of chapter two. However, nowadays it is not there, of course. But guys, I really like this POI. Like I said, tons of metal you guys can get, tons of loot in such a small amount of area. And then of course you guys can rotate pretty easily to the center areas of zone. So for example, if I go out here, there's going to be this house, I can loot that, and then I can farm metal, whatever I need, and I can rotate easily over towards Misty Meadows, Lazy Lake, I can right over to rotate over towards this gas station area right here, it's going to be a pretty solid overall experience for me. So once again, Weather Station's a great drop, obviously there's more chests over there of course, and a helicopter, which is a solid mobility item. Weather Station is a great POI, I definitely recommend it. And guys, an absolute classic POI right here. I'm actually not going to make the landing exactly how I thought. However, that doesn't really matter because what you guys can easily do is use this waterfall to go all the way down to the Hydro Dam. Now guys, this POI has a really good place in my heart as well because I did actually land here for trios back in Chapter 2 Season 7. I believe that this was the best POI for me back then. And I really enjoyed my time landing here because of the vast amount of loot it has. It has tons of metal. And also, if you guys are contested, there's different ways to split this POI and not get eliminated. But for solo specifically, I do believe that it's a really solid POI, like I said, because there's tons of chests in a small amount of area. And the main thing is access to Slurpee Swamp. As you guys know, Slurpee Swamp has the obvious slurp water that allows you guys to get shield for pretty much no cost. You guys can just sit in the water and then get your shield up and you guys can conserve all the rest of your meds for later stages in the game. Now, I really like the fact that you're able to do that in a POI like Slurpee. So landing at something like Hydro Dam is a really solid area because you have access to POIs like that. 
And another big thing as well is the vast amount of access you guys have to other POIs other than Slurpee. For example, Weeping Woods, right over there, as you guys can see on the map, right there. Misty Meadows, right behind you. Serby Swamp, right there. The Rig as well, if you want to third party that area. Basically, you guys have a lot of different options of where and how to rotate if you land at Hydra Dam. So for solos, it's a great POI. For trios, it's a great POI. Overall, it's a great POI. I definitely recommend you guys land here. And apparently, there's this new rift that I don't remember being there. So now that's a big benefit as well. All right, guys, and now we have arguably the POI with the most amount of wood in one POI. This is going to be Logjam Woodworks. In my opinion, this place is really good, obviously, because as you can see, the amount of pallets that you guys have to farm is an absolutely staggering amount. And of course, it has plenty of brick. It has metal from these things right here. This POI is probably the best POI for materials in the entire map. And for solos, it's really good because, of course, it's going to have tons of chests. It's going to have tons of pretty much everything you need for the game. But also, there's going to be stuff like an upgrade bench you guys can easily use here. There's going to be stuff over here that you guys can use. There's going to be cars that are over there. There's going to be, obviously, these metal trucks, the wooden planks, the actual logs themselves. Everything you guys need is absolutely here. And along with that, a really good thing about this POI is that it is going to be contested. So if you guys are confident and you're fighting, I definitely recommend you guys consider landing here and then trying to get those eliminations for Storm Surge, for maybe just elimination points in those cash cups and other tournaments. It's a really solid competitive POI. And obviously you guys have access to Slurpee Swamp. You have access to the rig right there. You have access to Weeping Woods right over here. Holly Hedges is also a short bit away. You guys are basically in the center of four major POIs. So you guys have access to players rotating. You have access to the free shield. You have access to everything you need at this place. And of course, this is just a classic POI for me. I really enjoyed this. This was actually the first place I ever landed in chapter two period. I remember when chapter two launched, I actually landed at Logjam for my first game ever. But this is very nostalgic for me. I'm really happy it's back. And I definitely recommend you guys land here in your solo games. Now, guys, we're going to be landing at Risky Reels. This is going to be the last unnamed POI I'm going over in this video. Risky Reels is an absolute classic. It's been around in some shape or form or another in every single chapter. There's going to be Risky Reels and Risky Reels again, then Restored Reels, then just all these different types of places that are something Reels. In my opinion, this is going to be a POI that's really classic. I'm not really going to go too much over into the layout of it. It's pretty standard. Just, you know, this building, movie screen, cars in the middle and stuff, and then sort of a side area as well. Every Risky Reels POI has had the same sort of layout. So that's not the big deal here. The big deal is the access to other POIs. You guys are really going to be close to the dog pound here. That's going to be this chapter's version of the agency. You guys can easily get the mythic weapon if you loot this POI quick enough. You can also rotate easily over to that area. That's going to be the orchard area, of course. There's going to be pleasant right there. The bridge. You guys are pretty much in the center of the map right here. So you guys are going to have great access to a bunch of POIs. And you won't need to rotate too early either. That's the main appeal I see of Risky Reels. But of course, you guys can also land here to get all of the amounts of metal, the wood, the loot, anything you really guys really want, you can get from Risky Reels. Of course, you guys are probably going to be contested, so if you are contested, my recommendation would be to land somewhere near the movie screen side, just because the house tends to be have more people landing on it. The movie screen, if you guys get the correct job for it, you can get the chest, and then work your way down and easily eliminate people. Sometimes, yes, I do agree that this geometry is kind of hard to fight in. But I still think that it's better to land at than the house because the house has places that people can hide. It's kind of closed off. It's not that visible. I personally believe that you guys should try to land at the movie screen. But once again, Risky Reels, great POI. Let's move on to the final one. And then guys, we have my personal favorite named POI of all time for competitive. This is going to be Slurpee Swamp. You guys might have seen that a lot of the POIs that I chose in this video revolved around Slurpee Swamp. But you can see Hydro Dam. You can see Log Jam over there. The reason that Slurpee is so good, as you guys can see, is two things. Number one, the vast amount of metal in the area. And also the slurp water. You guys can save infinite shield. You can get shield really quickly, of course, too. You guys can easily just drop down, get the weapons and stuff, and then get these slurp barrels. After getting these barrels, not only will you guys have tons of metal, but you're also going to have so much shield. You're going to have so much left over and then also tons of loot. Slurpee, in my opinion, is the one of the best POIs for solos too because it's really easy to split considering how big it actually is and how much shield it has spread across the POI. As you guys can see, there's going to be over 10 buildings in Slurpee. Obviously, they're going to be raining from different sizes. You got this building, this building, you got those, this one over there, you got this right here. There's going to be plenty of options for you guys, basically, focusing on where you guys are supposed to land in the POI and then how to rotate out of it. For example, if you if you guys want to get quick shield in solos, my recommendation would be to land on something like the Slurp Truck, something that gives you 100 shield really quickly. Once you guys are able to get that, you're going to have a bit of metal. You guys can farm the planks, the other stuff in the area, and then rotate around. Rotate, try to get chests and force points as quick as possible. Once you have around 200 materials and a bunch of chests, loot, and ammo, then you guys will hopefully be full on shield and you can easily go around, either start W King other players in the POI, or you can decide to rotate out and continue the rest of your game. Overall, in my opinion, Slurpee Swamp is the best named POI in my opinion all time. But I genuinely believe this is going to be one of the best places. It will be very contested, but I think that just adds to sort of the environment of it. You guys need to learn how to fight off spawn. It's a great opportunity for that. And in Cash Cup, if you guys win Serbi Swamp, you're going to be having tons of extra points from all the eliminations that you get. 
But guys, that is the video on the seven best solo drop spots in this chapter two reboot season. I really hope you guys enjoyed. I am so excited for the tournaments this season. I hope you are as well. But that is about it for this video, guys. Be sure to like and subscribe for the channel. And I will see you all in the next video. Bye, guys. Thank you.